Welcome to Night Hacking. Uh, this is uh, uh, Night Hacking in um, Jack's Mines. And today I have uh, Heberhard Wolf. Hi. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Thank you for coming. Yeah, thank you for having me. So you, are, you did a workshop yesterday about yeah. microservices. Uh, so can you tell us like a little bit about microservices? I mean, where is microservices? What are the, maybe the advantages? Or is it just a buzzword? What is your opinion about uh, I think it's a very important new approach to uh, designing systems. Uh, so I think it's far more than a buzzword. And actually, I've been working in that environment for quite some time. Concerning the advantages, um, I personally think that one of the main advantages is that you get teams to deliver software independently. Mm -hmm. So you have small units that you can put into production. And that way, the teams can just put their new stuff into production without a lot of coordination. Um, also, there is more technology freedom, so you don't need to have a centralized control over which technology to use, so instead the teams can choose which technology to, uh, they use in each microservice, and so again there is a more way to, there is a better way for them to work in parallel and with uh, little dependencies to one another. Having said that, it's interesting to note that uh, actually also like one team, like a rather small organization, could work with microservices, and mm -hmm. I think even then it makes a lot of sense because there are other advantages too. So for example, you can um, scale those microservices independently. Also, the system as a whole becomes more robust. And finally, continuous delivery is much easier to implement because there are smaller deployment units, so the continuous delivery pipelines are just much simpler and easier to implement. So I think there is actually quite a lot of advantages to that. And that is also, I think, one of the challenges to understand which advantages are important to you and then to fine-tune your architecture approach to make the best use of those advantages and to make sure that it actually happens. So when, uh, when, do you, when should a developer team decide on implementing a microservices infrastructure? I guess um, if they are, if they would benefit from those uh, advantages. So mm -hmm. if they uh, have an easier life because continuous delivery is easier, if they can solve their scalability issues, or if they uh, want to work in a rather large team and want to work independently from one another. Um, to me, it's important to point out that uh, microservices, as any other technology um, or, or architecture, is a trade-off. So you get stuff, but at the same time, there are some things that you need to provide. And in the case of microservices, uh, there is, because there are so many more deployment units, it's harder on operations and harder for monitoring and deployment and all these kinds of things. So I think that's sort of the, the trade-off. And what that actually means is that if you can't deal with that complexity for operations, mm -hmm. then it's probably not something that you should do. Um, okay. And that would be, uh, or you, you need to, to fine tune your concepts and to make sure that uh, the overhead for operations becomes as small as possible. So I think that is something to, to bear in mind. And actually, I'm somewhat, on the one hand, it's great that we have all that hype around microservices. On the other hand, I'm afraid of people who will just build microservices system because that's the way how you build software these days without thinking about, well, the trade-off mm -hmm. and, and what they need to, to think about and uh, how that actually also in increases the complexity in some regards. So is it more complex or is it just that the teams don't, don't really have the processes today or don't know really how to... Uh, to approach uh, microservices? It's, it's certainly more complex because there are just more deployment units. Mm. So obviously okay. it becomes more complex. Having said that, uh, there are ways to deal with that. So better automation, standardization, better standardization for monitoring so that each microservice is just uh, deployed and operated in the same way. And um, to be honest, I'm actually not sure whether that isn't a good thing because it forces people to think about automation and to make sure that this continuous delivery stuff and the, the um, automation around monitoring and so on actually happens. And I think mm. there is a huge um, gain that you can get from that and it's often not uh, really realized. So that is, I think, why uh, this trade-off and why these, these, well, issues that you have around microservices or let's say challenges why I'm not sure whether they are really a bad thing. 
Maybe they just force us to do things that make sense anyway. So you said the teams can pick the technologies that they want. I mean, so what, what is your recommendation or what do you see right now that is really working well? Well, uh, I mean, there are obviously some technologies that are, um, that, are, uh, that are very important for microservices. So Docker is an example because mm -hmm. uh, it provides you with a way to, uh, to build an application plus the operating system plus everything as one image and just deploy it and make that and it's really easy to use uh, and allows you to uh, to deploy those services very easily so i think that is uh, very important and then there is a whole bunch of other stuff uh, so i mean obviously you need to have some way to run your java applications there so you need to have i think fat jar deployment is a good thing there um, where you get uh, the application as a job file and can just deploy the job file, which makes um, deployment much easier. So I think that's important. But actually, there is a whole different level of issues. So for example, there is service discovery, how microservices find one another. There is the question of how do you make sure that the system is actually robust. I mean, if one microservice crashes, it shouldn't make the whole system crash. Mm -hmm. So there is a whole bunch of new technologies that you need to use for microservices it's not just the platform, the application server, or whatever. There are new challenges. And um, so, for example, there is Hystrix for resilience, uh, the, the library by, by Netflix. And it's just something that um, before microservices was, uh, wasn't really in the focus. So people didn't really think about resilience and building robust systems that could deal with other systems failing that much. Now they need to. So again, uh, it is something where we need to focus on and it might be a good thing because well robust systems are a good thing obviously okay so you you have also a talk about continuous uh, delivery right can you talk a little bit about that i mean you mentioned that it's more about the processes and not so much about automation can you sure elaborate? so um oftentimes when people talk about continuous delivery I get the impression that they, what they are really talking about is infrastructure automation. And I think that is mm. a worthwhile goal. But if you think about it, and that is one of the, the things concerning the talk, if you think about it, even if you could deliver software very quickly, you probably won't do it because um, there is still this issue whether the software is actually working correctly. And that is why I think it's very important to focus a lot on tests. And that is actually what, what continuous delivery is also about, about testing and mm -hmm. these kinds of things. Uh, so that was, what I, uh, tr that was one of the points that I tried to make in, in the talk. Um, and uh, I'm, I will publish the slides on SciShare so you can take a look there and, and download them. Okay. Well, thank you so much uh, for thank coming you. and talking to us about microservices and continuous delivery. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thanks for having me.